great. Okay, we're on. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. Sorry we're running just a tad late this morning. It is one of those mornings here in North Carolina, a good rainy morning, you know. Uh, but anyway, um, Noah just had a real bad seizure on us, which caused us to be a couple minutes late as well. So remember him in prayer today. Um, do remember our, our church family in prayer this morning. Uh, of course, most of you guys know that uh, Brother Dwayne uh, Palmer passed away. A very special man to us all for the last several years um, had been coming here to our church. Uh, turned 90 back in May. And guys, I just want you to know out there on Facebook land that this man was so devoted to church. He wanted to come every service, every time the church doors were open. And I tell you what, we need, we need more people like that in this world today uh, that would have that desire to be in God's house and be with fellow Christians of like faith. Uh, to worship our true and living God. Amen. All right, any other prayer requests this morning before we get started? Um, let's remember brother and sister Craven in prayer. They, yes. Sister Craven asked us to keep praying for them. Right, definitely. Our other shut-ins to which we'll be seeing tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to take a full day and go go see some folks tomorrow, Lord willing, those that will let us see, whether it be just by the door or whatever. Uh, anyway, we're going to go see and if we can see And tomorrow. if anybody wants to go with us, we'll leave here probably about 10, 15. Yeah. Remember Ellen, she's in the hospital yeah. with her breathing. Breathing. Uh, mm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, let's remember her. Of course, it's still, let's remember the Duncans, Brother Danny. Yes. I remember his breathing and his oxygen and stuff. That yeah, it dropped in. last night a little bit. Yeah, need to get that under control. Mm -hmm. Bless his heart. Man, I sure do miss him and Sherry, Brother Donnie, when Donnie can come. Yeah. We probably could, yeah. All right. Anything else? Of course, remember the request that came in Wednesday night, Sister Norma and or Thursday night, rather, Sister Norma and um, the Terry Linville family. We haven't got an update on him, have we, Bill? Um, no, not lately. Okay. Right. Not since Thursday. Okay. And there was a, a horrific accident in um, Louisiana Friday evening, I guess it was, or sometime Friday, uh, that involved a mama and three kids and a girlfriend to her son, uh, and the three kids um, passed away. They were hit by a drunk driver. Uh, and I was reading about that last night on Facebook. So remember, last name is Simmons. Uh, remember the Simmons family there in Louisiana. So sad. Um, they had just went to a son's um, basketball game or something, you know, family outing. And then somebody decided to drive drunk and uh, drive them down the wrong way on the interstate and hit them head on. So... Uh, not sure about the mama. The mama was in ICU as of yesterday. So uh, just remember that family. It was a family of nine kids. That they had three of their the last three uh, taken away. So just remember that family. So sad. All right. Uh, uh, got a card from my greedy sister, Shirley. How is she doing? Well, she's doing okay. Okay. And, uh, so anyway, uh, my cousin, husband, and, and my cousin asked for the church, the church that they, but my husband, my uh, cousin's husband passed away. But Shirley said that uh, Geneva's son has a plan to marry him. He so good to take uh, my cousin to the place of the church. Y'all doing all right? Doing good. Praise the you. Lord. Good to see you this morning. Amen. 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 All right. Any other requests? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer and do remember all these requests. Of course, you may not remember them all, but God heard them all. Amen. Amen. Father God, Lord, in the name Amen. of Jesus, God, we come to you, God, this morning, thanking you, Lord, for another day. God, that you've blessed us to live, Lord, another Lord's Day, God, that you've given us, God, the health and the strength, God, to get up this morning. And, Lord, for that, God, we say thank you. Lord, thank you, Father God, for those that are here and for those, God, listening by way of Facebook 
And for those, God, that may come in a little bit later on, God, we know with the rain and the dampness, God, that people are aching and hurting. But, God, we pray you'd bring them into the house of God today. And, Lord, we pray, God, that you would just touch and move, God, and bless and pour out your spirit, God, here at North Greensboro today, God. We pray that you would bless Brother uh, March, Father God, with the message, Lord, that we need to hear, God, today and tonight, God, that would challenge our hearts, God. And, Lord, that would give us strength for the journey, God. And, Lord, we do lift up, God, these requests to you, Father God. Lord, we lift up, God, Brother Danny Duncan, to you, God. I pray, God, that you would go there, Lord, where he is this morning, and, God, that you would touch his lungs, and, God, touch his breathing, Father God. And, Lord, we pray, God, that you would bring his body back into order, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And I pray, Father God, for Donnie and Sherry as well, God, that you would touch them, God. Continue to touch them, Father God. Uh, Lord, and we pray, Father God, for the uh, Terry Linville family, God. You know what's going on there, God. We pray that you would touch and intervene in that situation, God. We pray, God, for uh, Ellen, God, Sister Ellen uh, Coleman, God, that you would touch her, God, there in the hospital, Lord. Touch her breathing, God. We pray you'd open up her lungs, God. Just let them open up, God, be able to breathe better, God. And, Lord, that you'd give the doctors and nurses, Lord, wisdom, God, as they tend to her there, God. And, Lord, we pray, God, for this precious family, God, the Simmons family, God, there in Louisiana. Lord, we don't know them, God, but you do. And, Lord, I pray, God, that you would comfort their hearts, God. Uh, Lord, the friends, the teenagers, and uh, God, the family. And, and, Lord, if they went to church, God, the church family, God, and others, Father God, that knew this family, God. We just pray, God, that you would bring comfort and peace, God, to them right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And, God, we just thank you, God, for all things, God. Touch us, Lord, today, God, in this Sunday school hour, God, as we read about, uh, Lord, the birth, God, of, of your son, Jesus Christ. And, Lord, we pray you bless our time together this morning. And, Lord, we'll thank you and praise you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, sometimes I think I talk too loud. i got to quieten down a little bit, don't I? <laughs> you good. <laughs> All right, the title of today's lesson, The Savior is born such familiar scripture i mean we probably don't even need to hear this all read but we can probably some of us can probably quote it uh as uh, as it's being uh read this morning i know I, we were watching a movie yesterday uh, for the few minutes i sat down uh and they were reading uh you know some of this familiar scripture and i could quote it along with along with the movie uh but anyway uh maybe it wasn't yesterday maybe it was, no, friday, it was friday night, night charlie brown the charlie you're thinking yeah. of the plot yeah. yeah, and the play last night, too. So anyway, uh, Jenna and Noah got to go to their first. They had never been. I didn't even realize that they had never been to a Christmas play uh, in a church. And we got invited up to one with our friends in Reedsville last night. And um, young people did a great job. Uh, it was just such a blessing to go and be with people of, of uh, like faith. You know, we may not always agree on, on everything as far as our beliefs, but it's just good that we can go and, and mingle in with another denomination and still love God together. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, so the Savior is born. Let's read about the lesson overview. Uh, of course, this is the paragraph that's in y'all's book. Uh, but um, I'm going to read the one out of my teacher book here. It adds a couple things to it. It says, this lesson is about the birth of Jesus as told in the gospel by Luke chapter number 2. The scripture for this lesson covers a span of time from several days before Jesus was born <coughs> till about six weeks after he was born. Luke tells that Jesus was born in the little town of Bethlehem in the Roman province of Judea and how, by God's serene providence, Joseph and Mary happened to be in Bethlehem when Jesus was born. He also tells of the shepherds who were informed by an angel of Jesus' birth and went immediately to Bethlehem and found him. The last part of this lesson is about crucial events in the life of the Holy Family eight days and 40 days after Jesus was born. Now to me, and uh, maybe to you too, this whole birthing process of how Mary actually conceived Jesus is beyond my imagination. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but to know that God, I guess you say what, planted or put Jesus inside Mary for her to give birth uh, for him, that's just amazing to me. All right, and then let's read the, um, I'm going to read about a little bit about the history here. It says, it is well known to those who 
know the Christmas story that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, about five miles south of Jerusalem. In the time of Jesus, Bethlehem was located on a major trade route that ran from Jerusalem to Hebron. Is that right, Hebron? H-E-B-R-O-N? Hebron. Hebron. And from Hebron to Egypt. Bethlehem's claim to fame in the time of Jesus was as the birthplace of King David. Regarded to this, now this won't be in y'all's book, but I'm reading it here out of my, cord, out of my teacher cordon. Regarding to this day among the Jews as the greatest king of ancient Israel. Today, Bethlehem's greatest claim to fame is as the birthplace of Jesus Christ. According to Old Testament prophecy, it was essential that the Messiah, the heir to David's throne, be born in the same town where David was born. So that's a little bit of history there. Uh, under our Sunday school title, it says Jesus was born to be the Savior of the world. And then our golden text is Luke chapter 2, verse 11, which says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is who? Christ, Christ the Lord. Amen. All right. Now our lesson's divided into three different areas. We've got the humble birth, which is the first set of verses, excuse me, one through seven. And then we've got the angelic announcement which is the second part, verses 8 through 20. And then our third part is seeing God's salvation, which is verse 21 uh, through 38. But I'm not going to read any extra verses. We're just going to read what's printed here in our lesson this morning. All right, any comments before we get started here? All right, if not, let's... Look at verses 1 through 7, or what's printed here in our scripture. Pastor, will you read those for me? What's Absolutely. printed here in the uh, lesson? And it came to pass in those days there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was, while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for them in the end. Uh -huh. All right, then if you want to flip over with me on page 12 in your book, we're going to look under humble birth. Both Mary and Joseph were residents of Nazareth in Galilee, about 70 miles north of Bethlehem in Judea. Luke explains how, by God's providence, Jesus came to be born in Bethlehem in fulfillment of the prophecy that the Messiah would be born there. When Caesar Augustus, the ruler of the Roman Empire, issued a decree that every person was required to return to his or her native town to be counted and taxed, Joseph and Mary, being of the house and lineage of David, were required by Caesar's decree to return to Bethlehem. And then I wanted to um, read this sentence here out of my quarterly book. It says, God rules over all events and rulers in this world, and he does whatever he wills to do to bring his will to pass. Aren't you glad that God's in control? Sometimes we may tend to forget that whenever we uh, think about our president or our government officials or whatever the case might be. Sometimes we uh, tend to forget that. But overall, God's in control uh, and he knows all things, right? Amen. Amen. All right, continuing on here in our lesson on page 12 says, The journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem took from five to seven days traveling on foot and by donkey. This long and difficult trip came at a most inconvenient time for Mary. I can only imagine. I mean, she's getting ready to give birth. They're walking. They're riding on a donkey. Woo! She was pregnant with Jesus and nearing the time for him to be born. And so it was that soon after Joseph and Mary arrived in Bethlehem, Jesus was born. 
Luke states simply, matter-of-factly, that Jesus was born wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger because there was no room for them, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, in the inn. And then I'm going to read a paragraph here out of my teacher book. It says, Many of the houses in Bethlehem in the time of Jesus were built into the mouths of the limestone caves in the area. The cave at the back of such a house was the shelter for household animals at night and during bad weather. It is likely that Joseph and Mary sought lodging with relatives in Bethlehem, but the guest room had already been taken. So Jesus was born in the cave at the back of the house and laid in a feed trough. Is that how you pronounce mm -hmm. it? Trough? Yeah. For the animals cut into the floor. For ordinary people in the time of Jesus, the fact that a baby was born in a cave for animals at the back of a family residence would have evoked little notice. But over the course of passing time, this has become one of the most important aspects of the Christmas story. Well, that's what Christmas is all about. It's about the birth of Jesus, right? Yes, Pastor. Let me tag team off of that. I've got something I wanted to share. Okay. It said, this is from someone who's been to Israel and, and doing different things. He said, I bet you didn't know about this, about the manger Jesus was laid in. Of course, mangers are animal feeding troughs, but ancient Israel, they were made of stone. Now, what you would see in the modern, not what you would see in modern nativity scene, not comfortable, but great for protection. That's why those who were experts in this matter, the priests would put their newborn lambs in them for protection. But not just any lamb, the unblemished perfect lambs that were used for sacrifices for sins in the temple. And Bethlehem was famous for their unblemished lambs used for the sacrifice. But they had to be so perfect, so they wrapped them tightly in cloth and laid them in the manger to keep them safe. This is exactly the only time mangers are mentioned in Jesus' birth story is to the shepherds. Luke 2 says, This will be a sign to you find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. The shepherds would have understood this powerful parallel. They knew that knew what the cloth and the manger meant. The baby would be the perfect Lamb of God, the Messiah who would sacrifice his life for the sins of the whole world. He wasn't just a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. He was God, perfect, sinless, and holy, humbling himself to the perfect sac sacrifice to reconcile us back to himself. The perfect Lamb is why we celebrate Christmas. Amen. The perfect Lamb. Amen. That's good. <clears throat> All right, let's look here under the lifeline here in our quarterly. It says, Jesus, on page 12, Jesus, the Messiah and Son of God, was born in a small town, hardly noticed by the world, but rich in sacred history and prophetic promise. The King of Kings was not born in Jerusalem nor in Rome, but in little Bethlehem, showing that God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And then I wanted to read this paragraph in my teacher book as well. It says, Let us thank and praise God for the fact that Jesus was born in a stable and laid in a manger. This has become a sign to the whole world, to all people of his humble birth. The stable and the manger were adequate shelter for Mary and Joseph since there was no room for them in the inn. However, God used this circumstance to send the message to the whole world that Jesus Christ identifies with those in humble circumstances and God chooses to dwell with those who have a contrite and humble heart. And aren't you glad I think Pastor made a mention of that Wednesday night in his message that at the foot of the cross we're all equal no matter if we have a penny in our pocket or if we have a $100 bill in our pocket, right? In God's eyes, we are all equal. The play was about last night. It was very true, very true. The Christmas play we went and saw uh, last night involved a, a poor family who had lost a mother by death, and then a rich family who had it all. And they thought because this poor family was was Christian that you know they were like, well, who is this Jesus? You can't even see him. Who is he? You know. And so, um, and then Jesus appears 
uh, carrying the cross, walking down that the aisle. Powerful. It was, it was um, very powerful. Video. And uh, but anyway, I'm glad that I know him. I'm glad that I've been taught the way that I've been taught and the upbringing I had. I am so thankful for that this morning. All right, any comments on um, this first part of the lesson here, the first seven verses? Yes. Well, I don't know. Really? Well, I ain't never thought about it. Are you looking that up? Looking it Hold up. on, the pastor's looking it up. Between the ages of 13 and 16, according to biblical scholars. Why would he? Why would he have chosen her though? Was she somebody special? I mean, just pure. Wow, I didn't realize she was that young though. I don't think I ever realized that. Huh? True. Right, the lineage of David, right? I think that's right. I may be wrong. I can't remember what Joseph was David was. I'm not sure. Or was Joseph? Yes, Joseph and Mary, being of the house and lineage of David. I thought I read that somewhere. Verse four, actually. Yeah, because. Well, it says because he was of the house and lineage of David. I assume at least Joseph was. Hmm. All right. Any other comments? All right. If not, we will look at verses 8 through 12 is what's printed here in our lesson. But it actually goes all the way up to verse 20. If you, uh, But we're not going to read all that. We're just going to read what's printed here in our book. Um Verse 8 says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And then on page 12 under angelic announcement. Um, actually, before we get into that, let me read this paragraph in my teacher's book. It says... Um, while shepherds were at the bottom of the social ladder in Jesus' time, several of the most prominent people in the history of ancient Israel were shepherds, like Abraham, Isaac, Rebekah, Jacob, Moses, and David. Also in his teaching, Jesus spoke highly of shepherds because of their devotion to caring for their sheep, and he identified himself as the good shepherd who would give his life for his sheep or his people. The fact that God sent his angel to announce to shepherds the birth of Jesus the Messiah is identicated of God's interest in helping poor and powerless people. Huh? Oh, it's on the kitchen camera. Um, <clears throat> all right, now back to our lesson or in our accordingly here on page 12, says an angel of the Lord announced the birth of Jesus to shepherds. It is believed by many that the shepherds to whom the angel announced the birth of Jesus were in the shepherd's field east of Bethlehem, and they were the keepers of the sheep for the daily temple sacrifices. If so, they were likely well informed about the Old Testament prophecies foretelling the coming of the Messiah and would have had a special appreciation for the announcement they received, having Jesus identified to them by an angel as the promised Messiah. After hearing the angelic announcement of the birth of the Messiah Savior, the shepherds responded with faith and went immediately to Bethlehem, less than a mile away. Arriving in Bethlehem, 
they doubtlessly made inquiries of the residents, which led them to the place where they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. They saw the newborn infant identified to them by the angel as the Savior for all people. Aren't you glad he comes and he came to save all people, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Let me read this paragraph here out of our court, out of my teacher court. He says, The angel told the shepherds that evidence or a sign of the Savior's identity would be found in the fact that they would find the babe in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. When the angel had finished speaking, a multitude of angels joined him, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth good will toward men. Luke does not say the angels were singing, but virtually everyone who reads this verse of scripture immediately concludes that they were singing. So, anyway, they were rejoicing, right? Because they had found the Savior. Now let's look, uh, we'll read here in our lifeline. It says, real faith is demonstrated by a positive response to what is believed. The shepherds believed the angel and responded by finding the Savior. The gospel calls us to make a positive response to Jesus Christ, to believe in him as our Savior and Lord. And that is the most important decision a person can make is accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior. All right, one more last thing here under this in my quarterly book. says, those who do this, who accept the Lord and Savior, um, continually filled with awe and joy at the realization of who Jesus is. Knowing Jesus as the eternal Son of God, who is also our Savior and Lord, we feel compelled, as the shepherds were, to make known abroad that he is the Savior every person needs. Amen? Mm -hmm. From the lowest to the highest, from the poorest to the richest, from the most confused person to the less confused person, God still loves them all. Amen? Yeah. All right, any comments on, uh, on this part of the lesson, the angelic announcement? Well, I was reading the book of Ruth last night, and I was amazed at how God works cycle his prophecy begin with, with Naomi she goes to a place to get bread and she winds up being completely lost left everything and all her children and her husband died which brought them back to Bethlehem where there was bread. See, the lineage started with Naomi. I mean, I'm not using so many things to line up. I know. Uh, he's going to uh, 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 the bed. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. <coughs> it is amazing. Amen. All right, any other comments on this part of the lesson? All right, then we will look at the last section here, verses 20, well, 22 is what's listed here, and then 25 through 32 here in our lesson. It says, uh, And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And behold, excuse me, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death, before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then they took he 
him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy, uh, thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. All right, seeing God's salvation here in our cordially on page 13, says, As devout Jews, Joseph and Mary, in keeping with Jewish practice, had Jesus circumcised on the eighth day after his birth, at the same time obeying the instruction given to Mary by the angel Gabriel and given to Joseph in a dream. They named their eight-day son, or eight-day-old son, Jesus, signifying that he would be the savior of sinners. Forty days after giving birth to a male child, a ritual of purification was required of an Israelite woman by the law of Moses. At the same time, if she had given birth to a firstborn son, he was to be presented to the Lord for redemption from service as a priest and for this purpose, the father paid five shekels, or five days' wages, to the priest. To perform these duties, Joseph and Mary came with Jesus to the temple nearby in Jerusalem. In the temple, Jesus was recognized as the Messiah by an elderly, devout Jew named, I get, was that Simon or Simeon? I've heard Simeon. it pronounced Simeon. both ways. Simeon, Simeon. yeah who prophesied that Jesus would be the Savior for all people. He prophesied or pronounced a blessing over Joseph and Mary, but also prophesied of the opposition Jesus would face, resulting in a tragedy that would inflict severe hurt on Mary. In the temple, Jesus was also recognized as the Redeemer by an elderly, devout Jewish widow named Anna. All right, then we'll read a few things here under um, in, in my quarterly, in my teacher quarterly. It says, um, she, talking about Anna, like Simeon, was a devout Jew whose life was characterized by fasting and praying day and night. Her response to seeing Jesus was much like that of Simeon. She recognized Jesus as the Redeemer and gave thanks to God for him. Afterwards, for the rest of her life, she continued speaking about Jesus to people who were looking for redemption. She identified Jesus as the redeemer of sinners from sin's bondage. That's a good way to look at it, ain't it? She identified Jesus as the redeemer of sinners from sin's bondage. When Simeon and Anna received the promised Messiah, they publicly acknowledged him and testified to others about him. After waiting on God in faith and receiving from God, let us not fail to testify of what God has done for us. And I think we could all sit here this morning or stand or whatever and say, God has been good to me. Yes. Amen. Amen. He has. He's protected us, watched over us, Amen. gave us strength. Uh, even in times when we feel like we couldn't go on, uh, God has always brought us through. Amen. All right. Our lifeline here in our quarterly says, uh, Simeon and Anna were very old believers in the God of Israel who had learned the spiritual discipline of waiting patiently on God and saw the fulfillment of his promise to send the Messiah. Because of our anxiety about passing time, waiting on God in faith is never easy but it is necessary to receive the promises of God. How many could say amen to that? Amen. Waiting on God is never easy, no, it's not. but it is necessary to receive the promises of God. Waiting on Him. I'm going to read one last paragraph here out of my teacher book. It says, Jesus is the Savior who saves us from everything we need to be saved from to be saved. We often speak of Jesus as our Savior, but are we allowing Him to save us from every or from which we need to be saved? 
as his disciples, this is a continuing challenge because his word and spiritual continually make us aware of ways in which we need to be saved by him. God is not looking for perfect people. Are we perfect? No, by no means. And we won't be as long as we're in this fleshly body, right? We're not going to be perfect. We might say things or do say things that, you know, we don't mean to say or we get mad and angry and say things we don't mean to say. Um, but it's just, it's just life. But God is not looking for perfect people to be witnesses. He is simply looking for willing and obedient people to be salt and light to this world. That's all he's looking for, is for us to be a witness for him uh, and to let people know that, uh, that Jesus loves them. Amen? Amen? I was in a store yesterday, and I guess I totally embarrassed Jenna. Um, um, I said to the young lady, have a blessed day in the Lord. There was That's people. not embarrassing. No, but I think it was the other thing I was acting real crazy. Oh, I was wanting to use coupons and stuff and save money. And Jenna thinks that's always a joke. But I said, when you start making money and you realize the importance of money, you'll be glad when you can save a dollar, right? Or, or, or five dollars or whatever the case might be. Oh, but anyway, God is good. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Yes. Let's... Um, as we close in prayer, any comments? Any closing comments? Do we uh, remember Brother Dwayne's family? They'll be having his service. I think Mississippi is an hour behind mm -hmm. us or something time-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, so they'll be doing Brother Dwayne's graveside service um, at 12.30 or 1.30 mm -hmm. our time. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, let's remember his family today. His daughter, Sheila, and son, Gary. Uh, drove out to Mississippi. His baby daughter was already there. Um, so remember that family. I remember him. And then next Monday night, on Monday night, December 27th, we'll have a memorial service here at the church uh, honoring a great man of God. At 6 o'clock. At 6 o'clock on December 27th, uh, honoring him and um, everything. All right, for those who came in late, any y'all got any prayer requests? We already took prayer requests, but continue to remember to remember uh our heart that it is conscious and they took the off the rest of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Clyde, I know I read it. That's what it was. Yes, little lost boy. I did read that earlier this week. He's talking about the story there on the last page in our book. Um, page fourteen. Yeah, lift up the sun. I even had a star by it. Well, we could read it. We got a couple minutes. It says I first noticed him because he was so cute. The tiny African-American boy coming toward me in the mall that Christmas season. He couldn't have been more than three years old. He wore a green suit, red plaid vest, and vivid red bow tie with his white shirt tail, shirt tail hanging out on one side. One look, and I knew he had just had his Christmas portrait taken. But a second look told me something more. His big brown eyes were bright with tears. It was clear to me as it would have been to any mother. He was lost. I approached him slowly, gently. Hi, I began cheerfully. He looked up at the white jump before him. I knelt before him to bridge the distance between us and continued. 
What's the matter, sweetie? I asked softly. I can't find Mommy, he wailed, his lower lip quivering. I think I'm lost. I liked what she said. She said, oh, no, honey, you're not lost. I heard myself saying reassuringly, we know exactly where you are. You're right here with me. I think maybe Mommy got lost, and she must be really scared. But if you'll help me, I know we'll be able to find her. He relaxed immediately, calmed by twisted logic, and boy, did that woman twist that logic. I don't know that I would have thought to have done it that quickly like that, which only a child could comprehend. What's your name, honey, I asked. He answered with the toddler's lisp, Matto. Well, Matthew, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pick you up really high so you can find Mommy, and she won't be lost anymore, okay? He nodded. I caught him up in my arms, raised him as high, and I could see her doing this. Now picture this. Raised him as high as I could and silently prayed. In an instant, my prayer was answered. I see mommy, Matthew cried out, relief and joy evident in his voice. A moment later, Matthew's mother was at his side, hugging him, crying with him, thanking me profoundly. I just turned my back for a moment to pay for his picture, she explained, and when I turned around, he was gone. I know just how that can happen, I responded with a smile. I have three of my own. Then I wished Matthew and his mother a blessed Christmas. As I reflect on the events of the past few minutes, I sensed a voice speak to me. You lifted up the sun, and the lost one was found. All we have to do is lift up the sun, and lost ones will be found. Amen. That's good. I forgot about that, Brother Clark. I'm glad you mentioned that out. I did read that earlier this week. Yep, that's good, though. I like that. All we have to do is lift up the sun, the S-O-N, Amen. and lost ones will be found. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, asking God for his uh, anointing in our service. We do have the uh, marchers. Uh, going to be with us this morning and again tonight. Uh, so we want to pray that God would touch and anoint and speak to our hearts. Yes, ma'am. I'm trying to remember Lauren. She's been real sick with the COVID. Who? Lauren, my middle son. Lauren, okay. Yeah, his, I think it was Sunday, last Sunday they found out they COVID. And also Brandon. And Brandon, okay. Has he got a job? He's got two prospects. Once well, you can get both of them, then he's going to have to decide which one or do both, yeah, right? Hey, that might be good, though. Yeah, man, both and Brandon Amen. All right, so Brandon sick, or no, Brandon job wise, and Warren sick, yeah. and Terry Lynn. Okay, and the service today, and the Palmer family. <clears throat> Father God, we do come to you, God, again this morning, thanking you, Lord, for another day. God, that you've blessed us to live. Thank you, Father God, for this Sunday school lesson, God. As, uh, Lord, we have studied, God, about the birth of your Savior, Jesus Christ, and, and our Savior. And, Lord, we thank you for that this morning. And, God, we pray that you would just touch and anoint, God, in our service today. God, we pray that you would touch in the singing, uh, God, and in the ministering of your word, God. Pour out your spirit. Lord, may we leave this place today, God, knowing, realizing, uh, God, that we've been in, in the house of God today. And, Lord, we pray, God, for these requests, God, for Sister Jenny's. Uh, son Warren, God, who's been sick with COVID, God, we pray that you would touch him, God, open up his lungs, God, open up his breathing, God, and whatever else uh, may be going on, God, that he would overcome this, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray for uh, Brandon as well, God, that he, uh, Lord, would have a job opportunity, uh, God, and that he would get the right job, whether it be the one or, or both, God, uh, we pray that you would open up that door, God, that he needs, Father God, for him, then, Lord, we also pray, God, for Sister Norma's uh, uh, daughter, Teresa, God, that you would touch her. God, we pray, Lord, that she'd be able to get in to see the specialist real soon, and they would, God, be able to figure out what's going on with her, God. And, Lord, for Tyrone, God, that you would touch him, God, and touch them, Lord, as they're both sick. God, just heal them, God, in accordance to your will, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for the good news uh, about Mr. Linville, Father. But we do pray, God, that you would continue, Lord, to touch him, God, uh, Lord, whatever the outcome is, God, you know. And, Lord, we pray, God, most important, God, for his spiritual, 
uh, end, God, for his spiritual life, God, that you would save his soul, God, if he does not know you, Lord, as his personal Savior. And, Lord, we pray, God, that you would help us each one, God, to go forward, God, each and every day, God. Lord, lifting up the, your Son, Jesus Christ, God, so that lost ones, God, could be found like we just read about, God. Lord, and we'll thank you and we'll praise you, God, for all things, God. Touch our service today, God. Speak to our hearts. And God will thank you and praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.